All right, so I'm making this video about the Canon R5. And there's been a lot of concern that this camera is going to overheat after shooting, what is it, 20 minutes or so of 8K and essentially become a brick for 10 minutes and then after that be crippled and only be able to shoot maybe three minutes at a time after that. Well, that's not true. Let me clarify. It's true you'll only be able to shoot three minutes at a time for those, those modes that cause you overheat, like the, um, the 4K 120 and the 8K, that's true. But you will still be able to use immediately the 4K at 30p, the 4K at 24p in the normal modes. Those are still gonna work. The camera will still function as a camera. You'll still be able to shoot pictures in all of this glory, do all of that stuff. That doesn't go away. Even after you receive the overheat warning, those functionalities are still there 100%. So not really that big of a concern. Essentially, you can think of it this way. After you hit that overheat limit, you lose some of the special features temporarily and essentially have the same functionality of say a7r very similar or maybe a, um a7s3 not a7 III, excuse me so it's not like your camera is crippled it's just that uh, there are restrictions around using these special modes now let me make that live for you because a lot of people are like oh my god restrictions this is all this is highly unusual and strange well if you had spent I don't know, $10,000 back in the day, I forget what it was for the FX7. They released an update to shoot 4K at 120. And this is a smaller sensor, Super 35 versus full frame. And this would allow you to shoot 4K 120, but there was a heat restriction of three seconds. You could shoot three seconds, three second bursts of 4K 120. Um, and you could only do that external. So you couldn't even do it in camera. Now, if you would have anti up and paid a twelve thousand dollars for the brand new um, Sony, what is it, FX9? Well, there's a restriction on 4K there too, which is it doesn't have it. it. Doesn't have it in any mode. It doesn't have it external. It just doesn't have it. So now let's talk crippling again, huh? Not maybe not so crippled. The other thing is, and this I don't think is anywhere apart from it is on the Japanese website for Canon. So this isn't a, this isn't a rumor. This is at this point a fact, um, because you can go to a website and see it. It's not, I didn't write it, they wrote it, Canon. Um, so pretty much we can expect, I believe, that this camera's dynamic range is gonna be closer to 14 plus stops. And where do I get that from? Because I know that the 12 stops of dynamic range has been floating around. I get that because Canon is implementing, well, it's on the website that they are looking into a firmware update, which is going to add C-Log3. And C-Log3 is good for 15 plus stops of dynamic range. It exceeds the, um, it far exceeds the max dynamic range, which I think the theoretical limit on C-Log is 14. So to add C-Log3 would seem to suggest you're gonna have more dynamic range than what C-Log is capable of. So yes, I think we can probably look into um, that this camera is probably gonna have 14 plus stops of dynamic range, which is great. Also, in that firmware update will be an update for HD 120. So that's nice. Look, all I'm saying is there's been a lot of panic, a lot of concern, about this camera and that we're going to have a repeat of what happened with say the sony which i actually own some of those sony bodies that were doing this they would overheat and then the camera would shut off and you couldn't do anything this is not that with the canon this is just some some of the modes are disabled when it's overheated and you're restricted to some of the lower modes which by the way look fantastic anyway 4k 30 4k 20 um 24p these modes look great. And if you were to see the video of the 4K um, HQ directly out of camera, there is a distinguishable difference between that and how that video looks compared to the normal mode. But if you view that same video from say YouTube, honestly, I watched the video side by side HQ versus normal mode on YouTube on a 4K um, OLED panel. And I can tell the difference. They look identical. I rewound, I went back, I looked again. Virtually indistinguishable. So you're not losing much. 
anyway that's all i have this is just a quick update um ping me in the comments if anything um subscribe if you want more of this kind of exclusive content and if you find the hype is getting too much you know maybe tune in and i can clear some of the smoke for you until next time take care